So that was the road trip for Nottingham. I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, we'll do the same thing again next week. Well, it sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we will see you, well, I guess, next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. See, see you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. to Road Trip from Automotive Tales. On this episode, we are going to go and do Derbyshire. Yeah, we have literally been here for seven days because we specifically told you we'd be back on Tuesday. Right we smell so bad. I wonder what that was. What can I say? Right, Derbyshire. Let's do it. Let's go. So Martin, we are in Derby and we are heading for Belper. Belper. To find Spanker Lane. Oh, get you. So I have one interesting fact. I couldn't find anything about Spanker Lane, but uh, I did find that Belper uh, essentially means beautiful retreat. Oh, that actually sounds a lot nicer than Belper. Yep. Belper always reminds me of Belcher. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> I don't know, it just thought it feels a bit of a weird name, doesn't it? But, yeah, yeah, well, I'll give you that. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward on this lovely wet day uh, home to go and explore the peaks. It'll be lovely. But first stop, Spanker Lane in the beautiful retreat. when it's obvious that the best part of spanking is down at the bottom of the hill in the pub. Well, it's actually got nothing to do with hitting a child on the bottom or anything like that. It's actually all to do with Spanker the Cow. I'd like to introduce you to Spanker the Cow. Spanker has lived here for 75 years and that is why it's called Spanker Lane. Let's go say hello. Hello. was Spanker Lane. Yeah. It's a bit, a bit grim out there, though, isn't oh, it? There must be a way that, to fix this. This is ridiculous. Yeah, this weather's horrendous. Uh... Well, this isn't an alpha. Where do I put this? The hell is, what is that? John, I don't think we're in Spanker anymore. I mean, that surely has got to be a good thing, right? So, you join us in Knockerdown. Now, Knockerdown seems to be essentially a little bit of a hamlet. We found the Knockerdown pub, and we've also found the Knockerdown cottages that are just to the side of it, very near to Carsington Water. Now, we've had a look with regards to Knockerdown about its origins and where it came from, and it seems to be that actually this grey stone uh, is from the 17th century, but has, this place actually opened in 1838. Now, the unusual name has mining connections. It may relate to uh, the knocking lead and limestone roof from the roof of a shaft known as overhand stoping, which sounds a bit boring, actually. My favorite one is a knocker is a sort of goblin that inhabits mines and makes a tapping sound either to indicate rich ore seams or to warn of impending disasters. One hopes that the miners were aware of the difference between the two. So that was Knockerdown. Mm. Uh, interesting story there about Knockerdown. Yeah, I know, who'd have thought it? It's a, no, but it's, it's interesting. I mean, it literally is a house and a pub. So yep. um, I have a feeling that it may have been a bit busier at the time. Bit of a flash in a pan, really, this place, isn't it? Speaking of flash. Yeah, this is a family show, Martin. Oh, sorry, okay. Well, let's go to our next destination. Okay, where are we going? We'll be there in a flash. Right, let's go.
So at 1,518 feet, you join us at the highest village in Britain. Flash. Ah. Now, Flash has got a reputation and this is where the name actually came from. Now, we've done a bit of research on this. Now, it might be because of the village's isolated uh, location and I think John and I can confirm, yes, it is very isolated. Uh, there was also relative poverty in this area back in the day. It did have a reputation of being quite a lawless place. Now, Flash was known for illegal activities such as cockfighting, prize fighting, and counterfeiting. Now, it's this bit where the name comes from. For many years, counterfeit money was known as Flash money, and that's where the name comes from. Essentially, not only is it the highest village in Britain, it's one of the most lawless. And in a flash, we're here, and we're leaving. Disappointing. Mm. No, it was nice to be at the tallest place. Well, how do you follow up a flash? I don't know, how do you follow up a flash? I mean, put some clothes on is always a good place to start. It is, but what if you're feeling hard? Ooh. We should go to Hardwick. Hardwick? Hardwick. Is there a Hardwick near here? Let's mount up. We're going to Hardwick Mount. Excellent. Good job it starts every time we do that. <laughs> yeah. actually turn up at Hardwick Mount. So this is part of obviously Hard the, uh, the Hardwick Hall sort of group of roads. That was Lower Hardwick Street. So if we do a left in here and then do a right, yep. you'll find Hardwick Mount. So, so left. There we go. So yeah, this is it. This is, this bit on the right is Hardwick Mount. So um, do you know where the term Hardwick actually came from? I don't know. It's, it's, it's really interesting actually, because what it was is, and it's a really obscure little triangle here, this area owns the patent on making phallic shaped candles. So the phrase hard wick comes from the fact that they are literally penis wax. Uh, and that is how you get hard wick mount. It must be said though. It's very lovely. It's very lovely, but my gosh, you can't park here in tourist season, can you? I don't think we've done a drive by one before. Obviously, that isn't completely true, listeners uh, and viewers, but um, it's the only thing I can... I can't actually find any information about why it's Hardwick Mount. We're now in Hardwick Square East, uh, but the Hardwick Hall element of it and the whole sort of uh, uh, element of Hardwick seems to just be from a surname, um, and that's all I can really find. Um, so what we're essentially doing is we're poking fun at the surname Hardwick because it sounds marginally amusing. We are absolutely making fun of penis candle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that... That was Hardwick Hall, um, Hardwick Hall, Hardwick Mount. Um, so after we've mounted a Hardwick, where are we going next? Well, what are your two favourite things in life? Uh, I mean, I like liquids, I like to drink, I like to be jolly. So... I mean, there are other things I like as well, but this is a family show. So water with jolly. Yeah. Water come jolly. <laughs> John, I mean, there's no place... Oh. Oh. Let's go to water come jolly. Oh. Let's go to let's go to Watercombe. What? Watercombe Jolly. It's, it's a real a, place. It is a real place. It's a real place, listeners. Let's watches. go to Watercombe Jolly, and specifically the Watercombe Jolly Dale. Very nice. Onward. Onwards. <laughs> Twenty percent decline, John. <laughs> what productivity? Yeah. Oh wait, no road. In yeah, fuel okay. economy. What? So what we're trying to find here is the water come jolly day. Right now, I know what you're thinking. Ha ha! Martin's picked a funny road name because he likes the word come. And you would be completely right. However, it's worth saying that the come bit here means with in oldie world. So actually what we're doing is going to a place that literally has been named about what it is and how it looks. So we're going to water with jolly. Water with pleasantries. 
Uh, as, soon, yet, we're not. as soon as we get past this massive Volvo. Um, this is not... Uh, yeah, right you'll squeeze corny. through there. Go on. Now, I think we might end up parking somewhere near here because it says we're here. So I think we probably want to tuck in where we can and go for a bit of a walk. Wow, this is... I mean, I'm not entirely convinced the handbrake will hold us in. It's no, that's just true. We'll it's a bit more flat. Yeah, absolutely. And then we need to find some kind of signage that confirms we haven't just wasted our day. Right, shall we go for an explore? Shall we? Uh, right, water come jolly down. John, I have an inkling. Uh, it's an incline? No jokes. No, seriously, follow me. I think it's safe to say we might have found the water. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the water with the Jolly Dale. Ooh, a coot! So I'd like to show you a couple of things about the Watercombe Jolly Dale and its residents. Now, the residents of Watercombe Jolly Dale and the surrounding area have always been very passionate about their likes and interests. One of those, for example, is that they do support Leicestershire farmers. And that can be seen by the old signage asking you to be very polite about the type of crisps you bring here. If we go around the corner as well, you can see that there was also, prior to the BBC reintroduction of Strictly Come Dancing, an attempt to actually make a more localised version in the area. And some of the old marketing material is actually still available. I think if we just go through the trees here, yes, there it is. Incredible. Incredible that this stuff has survived. And there's a couple of other things I'd like to show you back on the way to the car. Follow me. Now, one of the things that I did want to show you on the way back here is very much the fact that whilst you've been watching Automotive Tales for a couple of years now, it's worth noting that actually when John travels between these places with myself, he actually doesn't go in the car that we're using for the filming. You won't see John in anything like a Ford Fiesta or an Alpha 166 because he very much prefers his creature comforts. Now, John doesn't know we've done this, but actually we've, his vehicle is just around here and I think actually you can just make it out there I think we just checked with Reg on that. Yeah, that is his, that is his. So when we do these little takes, we have to do these, then John will leave with his entourage in the Range Rover and uh, a member of the crew will follow in the fake Fiesta. He'll then get in just as we get to the next destination. So one final thing to show you. And the final thing I wanted to show you here was the fact that uh, this was actually a very popular area, this whole building here, uh, with the BBC. Now, over the time, the BBC have tried to uh, hide away from that due to some of the uh, historical things that happened here in the 70s. So, how did you like Watercombe Jolly? It, it was very jolly in the Comdale. <laughs> I'm never going to stop laughing at that, am I? I'm such a <laughs> child. I have a personal question for you, John. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer Fanny or Cock? No comment. In that case, we'll uh, take a lucky dip. <coughs> Where we go next? Fanny. Fanny. We're off to Fanny Avenue. Fanny Avenue. Let's go. Let's go.
So uh, we finally made it to uh, Fanny Avenue. Uh, obviously what we're going to do here is just find the appropriate road sign. I imagine it's probably somewhere near the front of the, uh, the street, maybe near this untrimmed bush actually. Uh, oh yes, there it is. Fanny Avenue. So why is it called Fanny Avenue? Well, we'll keep this one nice and serious for the time being. It literally just goes back to the old English saying of Fanny being bottom. So normally you would find these at the bottom of an estate or the bottom of a cul-de-sac. Unfortunately, the meaning has been lost on this one because as you can see, they haven't built uh, on there anyway. So uh, unfortunately in this case, I don't believe that the Fanny has hit the spot. Well, that was the Fanny. It seems only fair that we now go and flip it on its head. Would you like to come and see my cock alley? Let's go, yeah. I've always wanted to see a cock alley. Welcome to my alley. I never thought this would happen. We were unable to locate the cock alley. Um, it doesn't exist. There isn't a it cock. It doesn't. It doesn't. But we should. We need to link to what we've been working from here, because if you go onto Google, it is there. Yeah. And it has references. There is definitely a cock. There is definitely alley. a cock. There's references on Ordnance Survey. It was just, however, we were unable to find the cock. Um, call us what you want because of that. Uh, we're as disappointed in ourselves as, uh, as as you were, but we didn't just we didn't realise that finding it would be so hard. Especially after finding Funny Avenue so easily. Well, absolutely. And you think you know we were told that Cock Alley would be very easy to find because it was at least six inches, and it's um, yeah obviously not gone that way. So uh, six, six inches. Six inches. Six, six inches. Uh, so uh, hey ho. Well. Um, Feeling a bit ill after that, so um, I'm probably going to be deeply sick. Yeah. Oh, which reminds me, actually, let me show you another road. Okay. Let's go. So uh, we're going to go and have a look at Deep Sick Lane. Now, Deep Sick Lane is an interesting one because uh, it's spelt differently on that sign to what I was expecting. Uh, but Interesting. we should go and have a look and hopefully there'll be someone we can pull over and give you some information about it. Um, but if we're being completely honest with you, information is quite limited. Um, there doesn't seem to be a definition as to why it's called Deep Sick Lane. But we're going to go find somewhere to park and we'll be back with you in a second. So you join us at the bus stop for Deep Sick Lane. Now we will have a conversation about deep sick in a second. But first of all, the meaning behind it. Well, this one is actually relatively simple as well. And it will explain something we'll talk about in a minute. Now you will see there the definition deep sick, all one word. Now, this actually relates to the feeling that local wealthy residents felt when they realized that peasant wagons were going to go through their village. Uh, therefore, naming the road that the bus would come down deep sick to signify how much they hate public transport. However, there is something much more interesting that I'd like to have a chat about here, and that is the fact that the K might not have always been there. So just remember that as we leave this Derbyshire County Council managed bus stop, come and have a look at something else. So as we come to this junction here, have a look over the road. Where's the K gone? Which came first? The only thing we do know is that Derbyshire County Council managed both the highway signs and the bus stop signs. 
Therefore, it does back up the story that actually it was the people against the bus that made the sick more vile. <sighs> well, it was a bit sickening we didn't get to the bottom of that. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. It's true, it's true. Well, John, it feels like it's been an adventure that's taken us months rather than hours. But I feel like we've seen some lovely parts of Derbyshire. I think I'll, it'll be a long time before I forget Flash. That was mm. lovely. And some Me of my too. terrible jokes. But uh, but hey, why don't we finish with uh, not a particularly rude one, but just a nice one. Okay, where, where are we going next then, Martin? Sutton come Duckmanton. Sutton come Duckmanton. I know, I'm completely quackers. <laughs> hey, <laughs> sounds fun. Uh, uh... Yeah, no, should we do it? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Speed! Anyway, we'll see you in a minute. brings us to the end of this road trip. Sadly, Derbyshire has been a little bit unkind to us, but we finish on the wonderful Sutton Cum Duck Mountain. And that gives us a perfect example, as we said earlier, about the cum part of things, meaning with the villages of Sutton and Duck Mountain come together with one parish council managing the two. Um, and actually, we're sat outside the fantastic Sutton Scarsdale Hall, which is just down the driveway to John's right there. Uh, well worth a visit. It's your left by their right, <laughs> honestly. But anyway, it's well worth a visit. Uh, John, I would say that the unexceptional car has performed its duties. Absolutely, our little fake fiesta we've been zipping around in today has been great fun and has worn best part of 150 miles with no problems whatsoever, which is somewhat better than I expected. Absolutely, so it leads to, I suppose, two questions. Question one, what car should we drive next? Ooh. Have we got another unexceptional car? Interesting. Hmm. The second place unexceptional car could come out for a trip. But then, John, where should we go? We should go and do a county with a funny name. Any suggestions, audience? If you've also think we've missed any of the good places in Derby, then uh, you know, bleep bloop in the uh, in the comments below, Absolutely. and maybe we can revisit Derby if we've missed some of those really good places. Yeah, and likewise, if you want to join us on a road trip and have another car, yeah. we could always Ideally meet up with you. Ideally, unexceptional. Oh, as an unexceptional as possible, we can meet up with you in your county. Why don't you take us on tour in your unexceptional car? We're and more than happy to be chauffeured. Absolutely, I could get used to that, Martin. Absolutely, oh. of course you can. You own a Rolls Royce. But uh, that's for a different video. But uh, I think all it leaves us to say is, uh, well, I was about to end with what we used to do these videos as, but it doesn't really work, does it? No. Are you releasing this one on a Tuesday? I might do. Well, we'll do some, and then we'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>